What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. This is Dave from Surfcraft Union and this is a new series that I've been working on called 3 for 30. What 3 for 30 is, is three boards in 30 days and then I'm gonna give you my unbiased opinion. that said, it's going to be a smaller board, a mid board, and then a long or a big board. What's up guys? Thank you for tuning in. Episode 4, 3 for 30. Uh, stoked to have you. Stoked to show you what I got going on. Uh, we got a couple of really cool boards for this episode. Uh, but let's start it off with this one right here. This is my small board for this episode. This is the Firewire Machado Blazer in LFT technology. I know it's a Firewire, but Rob Machado is such a great surfer. And I love it how he kind of took to the alternative style before everybody else did. Um, certainly before I did, for sure. Uh, so I kind of want to see what he's into nowadays. If you remember, back in the day when he got off the tour and decided not to compete anymore and he started fooling around with twin fins and single fins, uh, Channel Islands made a board called the Biscuit. And this looks pretty similar to the Biscuit. So I have written a Biscuit in the past and I thought it was really cool. So I figured why not mash the Biscuit style with the Firewire technology and see what Rob's got going on nowadays. Um, as far as the actual board itself, it is a little wide point forward. You can see it's pretty flat and then it hits this nose rocker right at the very end. Very, very light tail rocker. I think this board's gonna be really, really fast and really good in grovelly waves. Um, I've seen video of Rob surfing it in really good waves and not so great waves at his home break. Um, so I'm wondering what it's gonna be like here. Uh, it does have a nice little V out the tail that's starting right around here-ish and going all the way out the tail. And you can see it's pretty, Serious. Fuller rails, obviously still hard edge in the tail. I'm running two different styles of fins. I'm gonna be running these uh, Machado Glazer fins. These are made for this model itself. And I think the Midas as well. Um, so this is what he's running. And I haven't ridden a thruster in so long. So if I don't like the way that this feels, I got this set, which is the uh, Captain Finn Panda Twin Fin Plus Stabilizer. Uh, I know that you're supposed to run them more in like twin fin style fish boards, but this thing has a pretty, pretty big outline. Um, so volume wise at 35 liters, 5.8, this is probably right around where a fish is to begin with, just the tail's different. Uh, so we'll see which one works. I'm gonna try this obviously in a couple different waves, try it in some beach breaks and try to hopefully get some good waves. And uh, we'll see if this thing doesn't uh, throw my back out. Okay, so for the mid board, this is something special. This is a paralleler hull by Fantastic Acid. Uh, this guy, Tristan, he's out of France. He shapes amazing hulls. And when I was kind of going through the catalog, I was trying to figure out what I think would be good for New Jersey beach break, but also New, Jer New Jersey waves that are just not super good all the time. And this thing completely just looks like it's dialed in. It's got a wider tail, um, more parallel look to it. It's got 
a little V about up to like a foot in front of the actual fin box. And then it's got hard edge that's starting right around here, which is very close to where the fin is actually placed. Um, I was a little not sure about bringing this board into this whole thing just because I feel like hulls are almost sacred craft, but um, a lot of people asked me about them and I thought that it was about time that I gave a hull a actual try on this. Um, you can see very, very slight, you know, S deck, very, very slight, um, relatively full, but still pinched in the rails, but the outline's gorgeous. I can't wait to see what this thing does. Um, yeah, stoked on this thing. Let's see how it works out though. All right, and for the long or big board, this is a Takayama Model T, shaped in California, pretty special, looks older, and I'm wondering if it's possibly a board shaped by Donald. I'm gonna reach out to Takayama and find out, because it would be really cool if I could find out if it was, um, but it's a really cool board. Um, with my lack of nose riding ability, I figured this would be a great board for me to try and see if a nose rider board will work better. Um, you know, in the past, I've had a few different styles of nose riders, but this one actually does not have a lot of nose rocker and not a lot of tail rocker, which I usually see in a nose rider. Um, so it should be interesting. It does have a lot of nose concave, but for the most part, it's really flat. So I'm wondering if this is more of a mushy wave California style nose rider um, and not a beach break New Jersey style nose rider. Um, I'm gonna try a couple fins. I've had this True Ames Velzy in nine, I've had this fin for a while. I've been waiting for the right board to try it in. And I figured with the lack of tail rocker and the lack of nose ride, or uh, nose, nose rocker, uh, that this fin might be kind of cool to try. Um, now, if that fin is too small, I have this guy. This is the Tyler Warren True Ames Pivot Fin in 10.25. Now, if this fin is just way too big, then I have this fin, and this is a uh, hydrophile. This is the hook fin, uh, 9.5. The idea is that this will help with me on the nose, and this slender area will help with me as far as turning and being able to kind of move this thing around. So I'm gonna try these boards, and then uh, I'll see you in a little bit.
welcome back. Uh, so as you can see, I decided to turn my garage into the new studio. Um, it just kind of like represents me a little bit better. Uh, I appreciate all the guys over at Handsome Devil. Thank you, Dan, uh, the owner. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Um, but this is me. So anyway, um, let's start off with the small board. All right, so um, again, we're gonna be doing the rating system numerically. So uh, zero through 10 for everything. Um, and the first category is maneuver, all right? And I gave this board an eight for maneuver, okay? Um, has a wider outline, but it does turn actually very sharp for the amount of width that's almost kind of throughout, especially underneath the front foot. Um, the round tail really makes it a lot easier and smoother to turn in general. Um, and especially when you combine that with this V, um, especially in like more grovelly waves, this V really helps keep this thing tilting and also an amount of speed. It's more of a double concave actually. I'm sorry, it's not a V. Uh, there is V out the tail though, all right? Um, when I wrote it as a twin plus stabilizer, which was the Captain Finn and the Finns, this situation, um, it felt looser than when I ran it with the Machado Finns. The Machado Finns definitely gave a little bit more grip as a thruster should, but uh, it was kind of fun with the the twin plus twinser, or yeah, twinser, twin plus stabilizer, because it just gave the board a little bit more speed initially. All right, but that's really going into drive. So the next category, drive, I gave it an eight. Um, it made not great waves, really fun connecting turns, going through sections. Um, trim similar to a twin, but connects drive through turns. Um, definitely more drive as a thruster, as I said before, um, which is kind of cool because again, I haven't ridden a thruster in so long. So it was nice to get on a board that was kind of like this as a thruster, see kind of what it felt like. Um, flow, I gave it a 6.5, all right? Again, connecting sections and linking turns in small, not great waves was awesome, but it felt a little out of control in steeper waves, faster waves, waves with more power. Um, almost felt like it didn't know what to do with the speed that it was creating. And uh, just kind of like had a few issues where I would feel a turn and then it would kind of lose speed and then it would gain the speed back when I didn't really need it. Um, that's mostly a lot of me surfing because I'm used to surfing boards that you don't really have to, uh, you don't really have to do flowy turns to make it get going. Um, so with that said, in steeper waves, thruster was the way to go. And in smaller waves, the twin plus the stabilizer was, was the way to go. Now, I think that if I surf this board in critical surf with the twin plus stabilizer, I think I would have completely hated it. Um, but that's again, my ability. Um, so the other reason why I think that this thing feels a little squirrely is because of the concave in the bottom. Um, so it's gonna help with speed, but it's gonna lose a little traction, especially in critical surf. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind. All in all, as we said before, this is very similar to the Channel Islands Biscuit, which uh, was pretty much Rob Machado's small weight board when he was doing a lot of stuff with Merrick. Um, Volume distribution slash duck dive. I gave it a seven. Uh, 
the 35 liters are hidden well when up and riding and while the board is going. Um, I do appreciate a fuller rail, especially for someone like myself that doesn't really normally ride boards like this. At the same time, it was not tough to duck dive, even with the fuller rail. Uh, pulled in tail definitely helps because naturally your chest is here and most people are stronger here than in their legs. So if you think about it, if you have a narrower tail, it's less airy to push down when you're duck diving. So grabbing like this, duck diving, pushing, duck dives very well. Um, paddling, 8.5. So you can't really see it, but for the most part, it's pretty flat. And then the nose rocker is really at the end of the board for the most part. Um, so it does paddle very well. And also I never felt the, the nose kind of sinking or punching through waves when I was paddling for waves. Um, anything this short and this thick is going to paddle pretty well, but I feel like the volume distribution kind of works well for paddling. Um, again, fuller rail. It just paddled really well. It paddled a little bit bigger than how it felt. So paddled bigger and then surfed smaller. Okay. Uh, special moments. I gave it a 7.5. Um, I had a really good time on the day that I would normally not surf. So the day that you see in the video that has me kind of just like kind of going back into sections and connecting turns, uh, the choppy day, I would normally not surf that day because frankly, it would kind of suck on a longboard and it wouldn't be that good with a bunch of uh, volume in front of you either just because there were so many sections and uh, hard to judge kind of where to go and when. So with that said, this board got me to surf a day and have a lot of fun on a day that I would normally surf. And frankly, any day that I get to surf and I have a good time is a special moment. All right. So all in all, 7.6. Okay. 7.6 for this board. Um, I'm going to be doing a little announcement at the end of this episode that will be talking about the small wave boards. Uh, just stay tuned for that. But up next is a mid, and you're going to like it. All right, so now to the mid. This is the Fantastic Acid Paralleler Hole. Um, sorry, Paralleler. It's a hard word for me to say, apparently. Uh, but anyway, um, to kind of start this off, you know, this is a different type of mid that uh, I don't even put these in the same category, but it was too cool to not do for this episode. And also, um, I just love holes and I'm just going to treat this as a mid as I go through these categories. All right. So category one is maneuver, which I put as a seven. All right. Now, so if I were to judge these, or this board against other holes that I've ridden in the past, then this board would be a nine in maneuver. Okay. But since I'm judging this against other mids or the category of mid, I give it a seven. All right. So what makes this board actually work really well as far as turning, uh, is the V obviously, as we spoke about earlier, and the hard edge in the tail and also the width of the tail, but not also being too wide, just giving enough bite. Okay. Uh, very, very flexy, flexy fin, uh, does at times feel a little chattery, but that's the way these things ride. And that's the cool thing about them is that you have to kind of like master how to give enough bite, but not too much and certainly not too little either. Um, holes are not about maneuvering. Um, they're about 
staying in the pocket. They're about, you know, uh, involvement style surfing. That's what makes them so fun. Um, there is this sweet spot that's right around here. And uh, if you're right here, you can turn it from the tail and it still just does these great flowy turns. They're a lot of fun. Uh, this board in general is just, you know, again, as I said, a little different than what I've written as far as holes, more of almost like a V bottom, but a less V bottom style hole. All right. Um, the next one is trim. I give it an eight, obviously. Um, trim's super good for its length and its width. Uh, holes have a feel that you can compare to snowboarding in powder, except instead of putting all your weight back to keep your snowboard above snow, you do actually kind of surf these more from the middle and with your front foot and with your feet a little bit more together. Um, again, the sweet spot about three feet from the nose, right around here to here, depending on where you are on the wave. Um, it's kind of cool because the width of the tail also helps going through those deep spots on a wave where sometimes a hole might just lose all of its energy and just kind of stop. Uh, so this is a more user-friendly and more wave-friendly style displacement call. Uh, volume distribution and duck dive. I'm sorry, I just passed it. Drive. Drive is an 8.5. But really drive is not a good word for what this board does. Projection is a much better word. Um, what it does is when you do your bottom turn, it takes all the energy, stores it into this flex fin, and then just launches you into the pocket. Unfortunately, sometimes because of the way that this board is designed, it might sometimes launch you past where you will have to use this V and this hard edge to get back to where you want. But it's a very fun board in that aspect too, because it almost makes it feel mid-lengthy. Um, yeah, couple grab rail uh, bottom turns just make this board amazing, and it's what makes me love hulls. Um, so, volume distribution, duck dive, I gave it an 8.5. This thing's 7.8, and I felt very confident in bigger surf. Uh, it was very easy to surf, it was very easy to do everything with for the style board that it is. Um, I had a few camera issues, which I always do in every episode, but I'll bring it up on this one where um, the camera just wasn't working right, but I had this as a pretty good size surf. Um, and actually today uh, was the last day for this board and I took it out on some pretty decent size surf and got some footage. And uh, you can see how they do hold uh, volume distribution in the aspect of a hull, it does have some meat to the rails. Now, unlike something along these lines, which is the Kloss Jones Siglo, where you'll see the rails are much more pinched and overall less volume. Um, much different board. Uh, this is more for something that's more cleaned up, uh, almost point break style, or beach break, but just not a lot of sections or people in front of you. Uh, but this thing hauls ass, but it's a different style hull than this. And uh, they both duck dive actually pretty well. This board duck dives great for its actual size itself. Seven, eight, still being very confident in some bigger surf. Um, so that was kind of a nice thing about it. I was a little worried that it might be a little too thick, but it's actually not. It's very forgiving in the rails, all right? Um, paddling, 
7.5. Again, judging as a mid, but for a hull, it paddles very well. Um, usually they kind of suck to paddle. And the reason why is because of how thin and the roll in general that they have. So the Kloss Jones kind of pushes water way more than this does. And also since it's rolled all the way tip to tail on the Kloss Jones, where this one has a little bit of bite and a little bit of V, it helps displace water a little bit better as far as paddling. Um, again, the thicker rails will definitely help it paddle as well. Um, so now back to special moments, uh, which I gave this a nine. Um, listen, I love displacement holes. I love holes. I think they are so fun. And it's probably because I spent such uh, time for a little bit riding them and then went back to regular uh, style mid lengths and stuff. But getting back onto them is amazing. Um, I really enjoy staying low and just feeling the power of the wave. That's what makes these things amazing. It's not for everybody though. Uh, you can't do much with it. It is a one trick pony in the aspect of being able to do everything. This board actually surprisingly surfs really good backside. I have a couple waves in there that you can see where I'm surfing it maybe a little more aggressively than how it should be surfed, but I'm just trying to have fun out there. Um, again, those grab rail bottom turns. Uh, try a friends out and try it and see what happens. And then you'll understand why these things are so hard to get off of. Um, I've done a hundred times and it just never gets old. So uh, yeah, thank you again, Trent from Enlighten. I really appreciate your time and uh, going back with me through text messages, uh, trying to figure out what board's gonna work for me. And thank you, Tristan, for shaping this. Uh, this one came from France and uh, it's never gonna leave this garage, so thank you. Next up is the longboard. All right, guys, uh, now for the longboard. Takayama Model T, uh, 98. Very cool board, very classic. All right, but let's go to the scorecard. Um, so nose ride, I gave it a six. Uh, I just couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't get comfortable up there. It has this wide nose and it has the concave, but um, I think due to the lack of tail rocker, it was just hard to get this board to kind of stop moving and allow me to uh, get up to the pocket of the wave and actually hang up here I had a couple like cheater five-ish waves, um, which was very nice, but I'm looking for that 10 and uh, couldn't get it with this. Um, I just couldn't feel it like sucking back into the pocket. Uh, again, lack of tail rocker. I almost felt that it was coasting through sections where you would have the opportunity to nose ride. All right, um, but again, it is a certain different style of design of nose rider, um, which is where we get into maneuver. All right, maneuver, I actually gave it a six. It's big and kind of clunky um, and a little tough to turn even with a smaller fin. So I originally used the Velzy uh, nose rider in a nine and found that the, it was, it was easier to turn, but my whole main thing was trying to get up to the nose. So I decided to change it to this, which is like a finger fin by Hydrofile. And it has a little bit more rake. So it did help with stabilization up there, but obviously not enough to to pull any sort of uh, 10 on this board, but also did help as far as turning, okay? 
um, this board just, it was even hard to like fade and set the line, which is something that I'm usually pretty good at. And I think it has to do with the actual weight. Um, again, this is a very heavy board, very vintage feeling. Um, but that goes into trim, all right, which I gave it an 8.5. So heavy glass, lack of rocker, really let this board move very fast through the water. I'm sure on a lined up day with no sections, no crowds, I'd probably feel a little bit more comfortable riding this board, but you gotta understand that I'm riding this board in the conditions that I can surf. Um, so I'm just trying to do this whole average, average day, average guy thing. So just keep that in mind. I know that there's people that swear by these boards and they probably have the conditions that work out better for these boards. Um, so volume distribution, I gave it a 6.5. Uh, aspect of trimming, the volume is great. Very stable to walk around until you get up to the nose. Uh, issue is not being able to change direction. I like sensitive rails. These rails are uh, pretty thick and don't really foil out. So it's great for stabilization, but it's a lot of board to be moving around. Um, sometimes I like to compare surfboards to driving uh, cars in stick and driving them in automatic. When you drive stick, you have gears that you have to go through. Now you also have to have, go through gears on an automatic, but it's clean. Um, this thing felt really clean in gaining speed, but it was just really hard to pump the brakes. Paddling, 8.5. Paddled awesome. Not too much nose rocker, where it's a slow paddler, like a lot of uh, nose rider boards are usually have a lot of nose rocker. So that it's a little tough to like kind of get into waves at times, especially if there's a little bit of chop to it. Um, the weight definitely helps keep it moving along. All right. <clears throat> Special moments. I gave it a six. And I'm sorry to say I didn't really enjoy this board. Uh, I think that again, in certain conditions, I feel like it may have worked out but uh, I just couldn't find them. There's definitely other boards that I would rather ride than this. Um, I definitely rode it in all different parts of the wave. I did a lot of left go rights, which were super fun. Those were probably the special moments. Um, and then fading back in and then fading back the other way, going back and forth and all that stuff. Um, but that was about it. So for that, this board gets a 6.9 as far as an overall score. All right, guys, end of episode knickknack. Uh, this is the original wax stash. Uh, it is a reflective pouch that you can throw your wax in. It will keep it at a temperature where it will not melt. Uh, New Jersey has been very, very warm lately and keeping wax in a car, I guarantee you, it's probably melted. So this keeps it usable. I uh, thought it was kind of cool, 10 bucks. Check it out. Next episode, I will be joined by a friend that is going to be helping me with the small board craft, uh, helping me review. Um, I think I need a little help in that category and I just realized that it's better to get someone than to take away the category. So with that said, I, I will be introducing that person. He is psyched, I am psyched. You guys all should be psyched as well. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for tuning in, appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you could. 
Uh, please share on your social media. If you know someone that might be interested in this episode or any other episode, please share. It's how it gets around. Comment if you guys have questions. I'm here to answer. I'm here to help. And uh, last but not least, stay safe, be friendly, surf soon. All right, thank you.